All right, so when I write this lesson material every week, I really don't know from week to week what I'm gonna do. Believe it or not, I don't have like a master plan. You would think in all these years of doing this that I would do that. But I like to just kind of wing it and I like to be surprised each week, just like you are. So we, nobody knows what it's gonna be until Friday. Um, so this week I was working on uh, something yesterday and then I saw on my phone that Dickie Betts had died and I was so bummed by that because he was such a huge influence on, on my plan, especially when I was like when I was young and I was learning how to improvise, I loved the Almond Brothers and loved trying to get that sound, especially his sound. Uh, you know, Dwayne Almond's stuff with his slide, that was, that was something, I, I wasn't a slide player, so I didn't really follow his stuff as much as I did Dickie Betts. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to do something kind of in his honor and like his style. So there's kind of three different things that I've identified that give Dickie Betts his sound. And we're going to talk about those. We're going to break them all down over a Dickie Betts style lead that's split into two parts. So in this video, we're going to go through the first half of that. I'll explain what the three sounds are and all of that. If you'd like to get the second part of this, download the tablature, download the MP3 jam tracks, which I have in two tempos. I have a slower tempo version as well. You can get all of that material so that you can practice playing everything we're going to talk about. You can get those things by going to activemelody.com, go to the weekly lessons page, and do a search for EP565. Okay, so Dickie Betts sound. I'm, I've kind of, I thought about this for a while, and I thought, I think there's kind of three things that give him his sound, if I were to summarize it. There's obviously much more than that. There's a lot more to him, but there's three things that I hear him doing that's unique to him. The first is a scale that he uses, and most of his sound is major pentatonic sounding. Like if you play, you know, if there's a progression going back and forth with two chords. <laughs> like this, this is what the jam track is by the way, D and a G chord, and you start playing major pentatonic scale, the D major pentatonic scale, because that's the key of the song. You're gonna start to have that Dickie Betts kind of vibe, just staying in the pentatonic scale, but there's one extra note that he adds to that pentatonic scale that gives him, I think, more of his signature sound, and that is like the fourth interval of the scale. So one, two, three, four. He adds this note. So it's not penta anymore. Now it's called a hexatonic scale because there's six notes. And it's really, there's two ways you can look at it. You can think of it as your major pentatonic scale with that extra note, or you can think of it as your major scale and you just get rid of the seventh interval. That may be an easier way to think of it. So, there's your major scale, just get rid of the seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then that's it. You don't play the seventh. And I understand why that seventh interval can be problematic if it's major, it sounds uh, different than if you flat the seventh. So there's you know different sounds obviously you can get from that, but if you just don't play it at all, it makes the problem easier. And I think that's more of a Dickie Betts approach. That kind of sound. So uh, hexatonic scale, that's the first thing. The second thing is his uh, harmonies. There's a lot of guitar harmonies, and actually we're going to have that in this jam track. There's a harmony uh, part that I added to it. Uh, but the way that you play those harmonies, if you're interested in doing that going forward, you just take a scale. It could be any scale, by the way. In this case, we're going to be looking at this hexatonic scale. <laughs> And you just start, you play the same scale, but you start at a different interval. And typically you'll start at the third interval. So you go one, two, three from the starting point. So whatever note you want to harmonize, you just, t you take the note that you want to harmonize, you play that note and you go one, two, you count that as one, one, two, three. You go up three steps in that scale and start on that note. And then you follow the same little pattern. So if I was down here and I went like this, and I wanted to harmonize that, I would, I'd come up one, two, three, and I'd go. And that would be the harmony for it. So if the lick was something like this, the harmony to that would be, right? I'm just staying in the same scale. I'm just going up and starting on a different note. You could go up and find and play other notes and start from those other notes and get different sounds, but that's kind of a Dickie Betts thing is to go up like three intervals from, from the note you start with and you get uh, kind of that style of harmony. Now the last thing I'll point out in his playing is his timing. A lot of times he'll play ahead of the beat a little bit. So instead of going 
like that, he would go. Right? You can hear it. It's a totally different feel. That You know, it sounds very robotic. That's playing eighth notes right on the beat versus... When you're playing a little ahead of the beat, you get kind of that, that sound, that sort of, you know, you know what I'm talking about, that kind of Almond Brothers sound. Another example of that, and this will be me just playing straight up that hexatonic scale, sounds like this. Right? You, and you've heard that in, uh, in his, his stuff before. So those would be the kind of the three unique identifiers if I were to just summarize it. He does little things like those kinds of things, little trills and things quite a bit too. Um, so that's another thing you might think about if you're trying to get his sound. Let's listen to the first part of this lead and we'll talk about it. Okay, so the chords in this are D, G. And we're just going to be playing the D major pentatonic scale. Actually, the D hexatonic scale. So we're going to add that extra note. And it starts here on the uh, seventh fret, fourth string. And that note comes in on the two. So if you're counting this, it's one and two. So that's the first part we're going to play. Now, the harmony to that will be something like... You know, it'll be higher than that. And you'll hear that in the jam track. You'll hear the harmony guitar part, but this is the part you're going to be playing. Walking straight up that hexatonic scale, starting on this 7th fret 4th string. So it's 7-9, and then we're going to do 7-9 again on the 3rd string. And then we go 7 on the 2nd string. We go 7-8-10. So... Right? And then that last note is on the 7th fret 2nd string. So just practice that with the timing. That's that what, you know, playing a little bit ahead of the beat like I was talking about. And then we come back to this 10th fret 2nd string and go... Full bend and then just play the 10th fret without the bend. And then watch this little phrase. Isn't that cool? Very Almond Brothers sound. So you can see that this little lick here is taking advantage of that extra note we added, that fourth interval, this note. So it's seventh fret up to the eighth fret. And then nine, seven. And then we go nine, seven, seven. That's on the second string, third string. And that's the first phrase. Now we're going to repeat that phrase verbatim. So it'll go. The only difference is this second time. We're going to do that when we bend. So we're going to do that full bend on the 10th fret 2nd string. And then we're going to hit this note. Which is uh, 10th fret 1st string. That's another thing that I hear Dickie Betts doing a lot. Is bending and then hitting a note on top of the bend. You hear him do that. In, in different positions, but this is a great one to do this in because it's major pentatonic scale pattern one, or major hexatonic scale pattern one. Same little closing phrase there. All right, so now we're going to play a lick that sounds very Almond Brothers. And what's cool about it is it's really simple at its core. Like, it's just that hexatonic scale. We're going to walk up the scale and back down the scale. There's nothing clever about that. What makes the lick, though, is the timing. It's that da 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 two, three, four, ba 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 da. And you're playing a little ahead of the beat like that. That's what makes a lick. So when the guitar does it, then the harmony does it, and then the bass player underneath it is doing it, and we're all following the same thing while the drum is holding a steady you know, beat. It's a really cool sound. So what I'm talking about, we're going to start on the 7th fret 4th string, and we're going to walk up that hexatonic scale like this. And 
Now from here, we're gonna walk back down, but we're gonna go down the pentatonic scale. This is pen major pentatonic scale pattern one. And that's how I ended it. So you can see I walked down into this pattern here uh, out of pattern one and then back into pattern one. Let me do that again. Obviously the tab's on the screen so you can follow it that way, but it's. And some of you are going, well, how did you know which notes to use? And why didn't you, why did you go up the hexatonic scale and down the pentatonic scale? Well, it just kind of worked out timing wise. I didn't sit and plan this. This isn't like, there is no formula that you always do it one way. But to me, this, the sound worked better to come down the phrasing, the timing of it. That was what it would have sounded like if I did the pentaton or the hexatonic. But I just thought it sounded better. to do it like that. It's really up to you as to how you wanna do it. But the takeaway in this is when you're looking for ideas when you're improvising, sometimes the answer is just changing your timing. You don't have to like play some weird out of the scale box or do anything super technical. What if you just went straight up a pentatonic scale or a major scale, but you did a timing thing like that where the, the beat is going, you know, right one, two, three, but you're staggering it. That kind of thing, you just, it's changing the timing, but it totally gives you a, a, a different feel when you do that. All right, so as we come out of that timing uh, phrase, uh, the next lick goes. This is major pentatonic scale pattern one. The little box here between the seventh fret and the ninth fret on the fourth string and on the third string. That's the first part of it. And then the, that's kind of the call and then the response to that goes. Little half bend there on that ninth fret third string. Release down to the seventh fret. And then we conclude on the seventh fret, fret uh, third string. Now that may not seem like much, but man, you could you could really get a lot out of a simple lick like that because in this little box shape, you've got the same thing up here. Exactly, it's an exact duplicate. And check this out, you've got the same thing down here. So you could go. So anything you do in any of those boxes can be repeated an octave lower or an octave higher like that. And then this lick goes. I love that. It's just a chromatic lick. So all I'm thinking about is this. Major pentatonic scale or hexatonic scale. But it's from here to here, I'm just gonna play it chromatically like this. Play every note. And then I slid back into that note on the seventh fret, uh, second string, and then the seventh fret, third string. So all together. Isn't that cool? Hopefully that's a little takeaway idea for you. So if you're playing major pentatonic scale and you're seeing these big gaps between notes, you can play those notes in between. Just don't land on them. But th that's called playing chromatically. Okay, so I'm gonna end this part one video right here. We've covered a lot of information. 
Come join us for part two, where we'll go over the second half of the lead. And remember, you would have access to the tablature, the MP3 jam track, the on-screen tab viewer, all those extra materials uh, that you can use to, to practice playing this. And it's a lot of fun to play a jam track that has a harmony lead. It really is, because it sort of holds you to your timing, and it sounds so cool to hear that harmony behind you. So anyway, a little plug for that. Uh, if you have any questions on any of this, pl please feel free to leave a comment. And if you like this, or if you want to know more about any of it, if you want to know more about timing, more about any of these topics, leave a comment. That's how I know what to do from week to week. All right, we'll see you in part two.